Welcome friends. Today I'll be talking in this video about the morphology and the clinical features of the emphysema. Already in my previous video I have finished about the pathogenesis. So in this continuation of that video I'll be discussing about the morphology and the clinical features. So before morphology, uh, let's have a brief briefing about what emphysema is. Emphysema is abnormal permanent dilatation of the air spaces distal to the terminal bronchioles along with the destruction of the walls of the dilated air spaces without the obvious fibrosis. We see the morphological changes what happens in the organ. The lungs which are affected they become voluminous. As the air spaces which are present in the lung are dilated, obviously the volume, the lung becomes voluminous. And as the air spaces are getting dilated, they will be compressing the blood vessels, the small blood vessels which are present in the alveolar walls. So the lungs appear pale because they have a little blood. So when we see grossly, the lungs will be voluminous, but they will be pale in color because of the little blood. In mild cases, when we see the cut section, we see the dilated air spaces. But in the severe cases, when we see, we have a bullet and the blips. Now, what are these bullet? Bullet are just the air-filled cystic spaces, which are more than one centimeter in the diameter. Whereas blips are when you have a rupture of the alveoli directly into the subpleural interstitial tissue. So they appear on the surface. Now, here what you are seeing on the surface of the lung just uh, adjacent uh, to the pleura is these we call them as a blips so they are present on the surface and they occur because of the rupture of the alveoli directly into the subpleural interstitial tissue whereas bullet means they are directly just the air spaces cystically dilated air spaces which will be more than one centimeter in diameter now uh, depending upon which part of the isthmus is involved so anatomical distribution emphysemas are classified into five types central isthmus pan isthmus paraseptal irregular and mixed now we'll see the individual uh, type of the emphysema and what are the morphological changes we see in this individual types of the emphysemas central isthmus emphysema this uh, as the name suggests the central part or the proximal part of the SNS is involved proximal part means already i told you distal to the terminal bronchiole we have respiratory bronchiole which opens into the alveolar duct and that opens into the alveolar sac so here the proximal part becomes a respiratory bronchiole so uh, centri esner emphysema is involvement of the central or the proximal part that is only the respiratory bronchioles are dilated whereas the distal part is paired that means the distal part is alveolar duct and the alveolar sacs they are normal only the respiratory bronchioles are dilated and this one usually occurs as a consequence of chronic bronchitis so in the chronic bronchitis we have already seen one of the uh, sequelae which occurs in the chronic bronchitis if it is left off is the patient develops emphysema so in these cases the commonest type of the emphysema is this centri snr emphysema and this emphysema is more common in even in the smokers and coal workers pneumoconiosis now this was what i was telling we have a terminal bronchial which opens into the respiratory bronchial which opens into the alveolar duct and alveolar sacs now here when we see the centri snr type only the respiratory bronchial will be dilated that is the most proximal part or the central part whereas the distal part alveolar duct and the alveolar sacs they are normal so that's why as the central part is involved they, we call them as central snr type of the emphysema this type of the emphysema we commonly see in the upper lobes of the lungs and when we see the cut section we have the dilated uh, air spaces in the center because respiratory bronchioles are dilated which are surrounded by rim of normal lung parenchyma because the alveolar sacs are normal so respiratory bronchial the central one dilated peripheral part will be normal here if you see the gross cut section these are the dilated air spaces what you are seeing and these are surrounded by this is all the normal alveolar tissue so these dilated air spaces will be surrounded by the normal alveolar sacs normal lung parenchyma so central dilated with surround which is surrounded by the rim of the normal lung parenchyma now this is a microscopy these are all the alveolar spaces normal alveolar spaces and if you see here this is a dilated air space 
which is surrounded by the normal alveoli, the alveolar sacs, which are surrounded by the normal alveolar sacs. Now coming to the another time, that is the pan esnar. Pan means entire. Wherever the pan comes, the word pan comes means entire. Means all the parts of the esnar are dilated in the pan esnar emphysema. Now this is more common when in the patients who are having alpha one antitrypsin deficiency. And also in the smokers, but in the smokers, more common is sentry esnar. But uh, pan esnar usually we see in the alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency, and this is more common in the lower zone of the lungs. Sentry esnar is more common in the upper zones of the lungs, whereas pan esnar is more common in the lower zones of the lungs. Now, this is the diagrammatic representation. You see here we have dilated respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs. All the parts of the esnus, they are dilated in the pan esnar type of the emphysema. Now when we see uh, the microscopic uh, examination, what we see is all the portions are dilated and in between we have the spurs of broken septa which are formed due to the rupture of the alveolar walls. So, uh, as the elastic tissue is very less in this, if we do the special stains elastics for the elastic tissue, we can easily make out that there is a loss of the elastic tissue. Now, here this is the gross. See, all the dilated, all the air spaces are dilated and the distended. And this is the microscopy where you can see these are the distended air spaces and these are the spurs of the broken alveolar septa. If you are seeing here, these are the spurs of the broken alveolar septa. Now this is just for the comparison between the sentry SNR and the pan SNR, the gross diagram. Here if you see you can make out in the sentry SNR we have a few central dilated respiratory bronchioles which are surrounded by the normal alveolar tissue but if you see here we have completely all the air spaces are dilated. That is pan SNR emphysema. Now coming to the paraseptal type of the emphysema, so as the name suggests, it's a distal type of the emphysema, distal part is involved. Distal part uh, means we have alveolar sacs, sometimes even the alveolar ducts are also dilated, whereas here the proximal part is normal. That is, we have the respiratory bronchioles which are normal, only we have the alveolar sacs and the alveolar ducts which are dilated. Now this is called as a paraseptal because these are localized specifically at the peripheral part and along the pleura or along the perilobular septa. So because they are near the perilobular septa, this is called as a paraseptal emphysema. And this is more severe when in the upper half of the lungs. So we have sentry SNR in the upper half and paraseptal in the upper half, whereas pan SNR we are seeing in the lower half of the lungs and as it's uh, present near the pleura along the pleura because they are the distended air spaces distal uh, the distal part of the isthmus so they are present near the pleura so whenever there is a rupture of this distal air spaces the air can escape into the pleural cavity and that can produce the spontaneous pneumothorax in the young adult so this becomes one of the common cause of the spontaneous pneumothorax now this is the diagrammatic representation which is showing that the respiratory bronchiole it remains normal but we have dilated alveolar sacs and alveolar ducts. So this is the distal emphysema which we see in the upper zones of the lungs and we see peripherally below the pleura or along the pleura and the perilobular septa. Now the next one is irregular emphysema or parapsychiatrical. This usually we see surrounding the scars. So we have only a small part of the lung parenchyma which is involved adjacent to the scar tissue. So usually the patients will be asymptomatic because only a part, very small part of the lung tissue which is adjacent to the scar is involved. So usually the patient doesn't come with emphysema in these cases but this will be an incidental finding when the autopsy is being done. Now this is the irregular where you can see some of the respiratory bronchioles are dilated and few alveolar sacs are dilated but some of the alveolar sacs are normal. Usually what happens in the scar tissue is already I told you we have a fibrosis. So that fibrous structure when it is contracting it will drag off along with it the adjacent air spaces which causes the distension of the air spaces. 
so that's why we have an irregular type of the involvement not a specific part of the isness is involved but irregularly it is involved and we don't have a specific site also like its upper lobe or the lower lobe but wherever the patient has an injury and the scar tissue there we can find this type of the emphysema now mixed emphysema is we see all the three types of the emphysema usually we see in the severe cases of the emphysema where we have the centri isnar in the upper lobe span isnar in the lower lobes and paraseptal we see in the subpleural regions now this is a summary of all the types of the emphysema what we have seen if you remember this diagram you can remember everything the type the uh, location also so centri isnar is which involves the proximal part that is respiratory bronchiole it is present in the upper lobes of the lungs and the most common cause is the smoking whereas the pan isnar involves all the parts of the isnar present in the lower lobes of the lungs and it is because of alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency paraseptal is in the upper lobes present along the pleura or along the perilobular septa involving the distal part of the isnar we have alveolar duct and the alveolar sacs which are involved and the uh, irregular is or cicatrical is which is present along the scar tissue so it's an irregular involvement any part of the isnar can be involved now that was about the morphology now coming to the clinical features usually the patient will not come in the initial stages the symptoms will appear only after one third of the functioning lung parenchyma is damaged so after the one third is damaged then only the symptoms of the dyspnea and the cough will come, will will appear and the patient comes with the dyspnea uh, with the cough or the wheezing sounds and a very classical presentation is the patient will have barrel chest and he will have a dyspnea with prolonged expiration and these patients typical position is they sit forward with a hunched over position and they breathe to pursed lips so this is a very typical classical features of the patient with the emphysema he has a barrel chest he sits in a hunched over position um, and then he has a prolonged expiration and he breathes through pursed lips and because the air spaces are dilated these patients are over ventilated and they remain well oxygenated actually the uh, this is a myth that they are over oxygenated so they uh, have given the another name for this as a pink puffers so blue bloaters are the patients with the chronic bronchitis and the pink puffers are the patient with the emphysema because they are over ventilated now this is a typical position what we call it as a hunched over position hunched forward position the patient is bending forward he has uh, pursed lips and uh, he has a prolonged expiration and this is a barrel chest if you see this is the normal chest and this is the barrel chest barrel chest means we have increase in the anterior posterior diameter whereas the transverse diameter it remains the same but anterior posterior diameter increases this is the barrel chest now what are the complications of the emphysema the patient can present with the respiratory failure next uh, next complication is right heart failure so the patient this patients may have uh, pulmonary hypertension because as the air spaces are dilating they will be compressing the pulmonary vessels and as they are compressing there will be a back pressure in the right heart so slowly the patient may develop the changes in the right heart and he may go into the right heart failure and the patients will have coronary artery disease now exact etiopathogenesis of this is not known but most of the cases of the emphysema the patients have coronary artery uh, calcinosis is present in the coronary arteries now how the how this is linked the still etiopathogenesis pathogenesis is not clear but most of the patients have coronary artery disease and uh, in the paraseptal cases the patients will develop the spontaneous pneumothorax and that pneumothorax may, may increase to such an extent that the patient may develop the massive collapse of the lungs so these are the complications he may develop the heart failure he may develop the respiratory failure he may have coronary artery disease or collapse of the lungs so that finishes about the morphology and the complications of the emphysema thank you friends